Epsom salt soak for this little honey with the uh, necrotizing bacterial infection we're trying to clear up. This is how I do it. Um, I get a tall, skinny kind of a cup <clears throat> and you know the ratio is um, two to one. So I do one cup of Epsom salts, two cups of, of hot water. And then once you pour the hot water over the cup of Epsom salts, I don't know what it is exactly, but there's like an exothermic or endothermic effect where the Epsom salts cools the water pretty quickly. So it is just absolutely perfect. And if I'm lucky, the little kitties are getting very used to it and they actually doze off while they are soaking. So, if the water's just the perfect temperature, and this time it is. So this is Aria, who I'm having a much harder time getting it completely cleared up. And it all seems to have migrated and concentrated besides her toenails and her paws and a big old lesion on her forehead. This is actually better than it was. It's quite a bit reduced, but it is very stubborn and I am still having trouble figuring out how to completely get rid of this. So while I do the Epsom salt soaks, I take a Q-tip and I gently swab it. So it's sort of getting some of the same benefits. Obviously I can't soak her head, but I, uh, I try to soak them pretty much until the water starts cooling. I'll go like 15 minutes if they seem like they're doing well with it that long. And I just stand here the whole time right beside them. If she does wake up and start struggling, I sort of put my fingers in a V around her neck. I don't close them on her neck. I just leave them as a support. So she rests her chin on my fingers and I keep her head from going underwater that way. Um, until she calms down and then I pick up the towel and put it over the edge of the cup so she can rest on it like this. It's a great method. I've <clears throat> I've tried several things since I got these two. In a shallower, shorter bowl, just somehow they always end up dunking their faces and heads. So this is the best way I've found. So this is how you do Epsom salt soaks with teeny, teeny, tiny kittens if you need to then as soon as it's done i uh have warm towels ready either fresh out of the dryer or i have them under the hot lights and i wrap them in the warm towels put them in their carrier under the hot lights and i don't rinse them i don't wash them i basically oh she's waking up i basically leave the uh i leave the epsom salts in their fur all night because we have to do it again tomorrow anyway so their fur feels a little stiff and it's not nice and soft kitten fur but i'm hoping that means that they get more of the benefits from the epsom salts and there's like i said no point in cleaning it out because i'm going to be doing it again tomorrow right now we're doing this every single day until i really see some improvement I'm just worried that the longer it takes to clear this lesion on her head up, she could still, I suppose, have a soft spot, a fontanelle, or some sort of opening in her skull. And I, I'm really worried the infection will get into there, get into her brain. And then that could be obviously fatal. So, so this is what we're doing right now. And that's how we do it. And I must go, so I help this poor little sweetie stay inside the cup.